Hi everyone, how are you doing? Welcome back to Wi-Fi Sheep. I'm Tom and in this tech video we're looking at the C64 Mini. I happen to have one here, which I have opened and I have had a look inside because this, believe it or not, is the second attempt at making this video. Look what happened at the first time around. Uh, what I'm going to try using is one of the later Raspberry Pi adapters which will probably be a little bit too powerful for it but hopefully won't cause a problem and it will run with it fine. Uh, we've used this with the NES Mini and it's been absolutely fine so we'll just plug in and get it all into frame. Helps if we actually do set it to uh, let's find a source on this. Hmm button on the side, I'll just try doing a reset. See if that solves it. Huh, not a good start. Right, let's try and plug in. I didn't realise this was going to power up the minute we uh, plugged it in. I thought it had an on off switch, but maybe it doesn't. See, this is a, a common, you know, PAL European flat screen. Okay, it's a cheap flat screen, but this should work. Okay. Maybe it's the power supply, it's not right. Yeah, um, we're back in the workshop now here, so we've got sort of better stuff. I don't have to deal with pink telly again. Um, so we'll see if we can make this work a bit better this time. Uh, yeah, so let's get into it. Okay, so here is the box for the C64 Mini. I have to say the overall presentation of this unit is absolutely superb. And a quick look on the back there of all the different games. And we'll just quickly open up. And inside there's this sort of internal cardboard box, if you like. Again, really nicely presented with an embossed of a C64 Mini logo on the front. And inside there is the console and the joystick, all nicely packed up. And we'll have a quick look at the unit itself. There we go. And of course it's got a USB on the side there. Uh, the controller itself, for me, felt a little bit clunky, and there was this loose piece there, which I'm not sure if that's meant to be there or not, but um, yeah. And there's the HDMI leads and the USB. Uh, a quick look at the uh, quick start guide, printed manual, which is mostly in black and white inside, uh, a lot of languages with English at the front. Okay, so I wanted to show you sort of a quick uh, view of what the uh, size of the console was like. So I thought I would just put it next to a, a British pound coin, which is all very good if you're familiar with pound coins, uh, which a lot of our international audience won't be. So I need something else to show you the size difference. So I found a five and a quarter inch floppy disk, uh, which, yeah, gives you an idea of the actual size of the C64 Mini, if you're familiar with five and a quarter inch disks, of course. And then uh, just for a bit of fun, I thought we'd try uh, putting it next to an original 1981 ZX Spectrum, or ZX Spectrum, I should say, really. Uh, so, the yeah. Okay, uh, also to make this work, I used a 5 volt, 2 amp uh, USB Raspberry Pi power supply, because the C64 Mini doesn't come with power supply. And I'm also including a separate USB keyboard. The reason for this is the keyboard on the C64 Mini isn't real, it doesn't work, it's just for show. Okay, let's plug in. So we'll first of all put the HDMI in, and then the 5 volts power supply via the uh, micro USB. And we're going to plug the USB joystick and the keyboard into the two sockets on the side of the unit. And with that, we'll turn on and we're good to go. Okay then, hopefully you can see that all right. So we're into the uh, main menu. Very much like uh, the NES Classic Edition. Use the uh, joystick to scroll back and forth. And we've got settings at the bottom. Uh, there we are, monitor settings. Now we're using a PAL television here. Um, some YouTubers I've noticed, especially in uh, North America who have got this system, they've imported it from Europe. I've talked about there being a problem with uh, 
reading uh, monitors. No such problem here, although it's worth bearing in mind this monitor is a 1610, not a 169 monitor, so things may look a little bit tall. But um, I don't know. I don't want to do anything if we change it to North America. So we'll keep it uh, European for free for the minute. Another thing it's a bit awkward is the uh, keyboard. The USB keyboard is plugged in. It'd be nice if it actually did something in the menu and it doesn't. You've got to use the joystick, which is a little bit of a shame. Anyway, let's try a game. Let's try Eurivium, because it's a game I'm familiar with. But you know, I said familiar with, not good at playing. menu button. I've got this virtual keyboard. It's just a shame we haven't got any real keyboard input, which is a shame. So let's go and exit game. I'm not familiar with a lot of these, I'll be completely honest with you. The C64 is a system a little bit for my time, and it's not something I grew up with. So, um, I really do need to sort of sit through these games. School Days is something I do understand. It's, this is a port from the ZX Spectrum. He says, well, not really knowing how to play it. I just, it's a game I've been interested in. Now, see, it says, yes, no. Uh, do you want to put your own names in? So, I need a keyboard to say no. definitely tell the uh, sort of ZX Spectrum origins of this. I'll be honest with you, I don't know what I'm doing. Something about hitting these shields you've got to do or something on the uh, walls and yeah I know there's probably a load of people now just watching this screaming at me going, you should do this, you should do that, how are you so stupid? Um, yeah, fair comment, don't know what I'm doing. But you know, do kind of, would like to know what I'm doing. Okay, uh, one other aspect that really did interest me in this unit, especially not coming from a Commodore 64 background, is the fact this unit is programmable. And if we scroll through the rest of the game list... There we are, C64 Basic. Which if we load up... There we go. This is where you need the keyboard for BASIC. Um, now my BASIC is not bad as a programming language. I do sort of understand it. You've probably seen my other tutorials on Wi-Fi Sheep. However, I'm more familiar with BBC BASIC, which has some slightly different lingo to Commodore BASIC, which is based on the Microsoft BASIC engine. Um, so for example, I've been used to typing CLS, which doesn't work. That should clear the screen. Um, is it CLR on? Yeah, um, so, but you can, you know, do a very, very simple looping program. So 10, um, print, uh, oops, let's get this right. Oh, 
Pi Phi Sheep. 20, go to 10, 30, end. Now we should be able to list that. Yes, we can. And can we run that? There you go. The most simplest basic program. Done it a load of times before. This can obviously do a lot more than that, but it does make the C64 Mini programmable. Okay, so let's look at adding our own game to the C64 Mini. The game I've chosen is Revs, which I own a boxed version for the BBC Micro. It's a great little uh, 3D 8-bit racer game, really ahead of its time. So it'd be nice to see we can get this running on the C64 Mini. For this, I've downloaded a ROM file and I've just had to rename it to this custom file name that the C64 requires. I'm just going to drag it onto the USB stick off my Mac. So we put the USB stick in. Now, I needed the keyboard and the joystick, which meant I had to use a USB hub. There's only two USB ports on the device. And then things started to go slightly wrong. Looking online from the official website for the C64 Mini, it suggested what to type into BASIC to try and get the game loading. And although it was loading something, you can see here I just struggled to get anything to work. Uh, yeah, just file not found, searching, start to take, just horrendous. And it, even at this point, after this attempt of loading, it then actually crashed. So yeah, not great. Eventually though, we did get the game to reload and it, it played all right, but again, the joystick controls, because the keyboard didn't work with it properly, so the joystick controls, I I just struggled with it. Again, it might just be me, but it, it kind of ruined the experience for me, if I'm honest. So, overall, what do I think of the C64 Mini? Well, it's a nice thing. It's presented very well. I have to admit, I'm a little bit undecided, borderlining disappointed with it really. Um, games list, I mean maybe I just don't know how to play them properly which I completely accept but I don't know, there's something about it which is just a little bit disappointing. The game loading has been difficult to say the least um, and if you bought this just as sort of an arcade box um, or you know Linux box which is effectively what it is um, <sighs> I don't know. I don't know in all honesty. I'm a little on the fence. Anyway, what do you think? Leave a comment uh, below this video and thank you so much for watching us yet again here on the Wi-Fi Sheep channel. Don't forget to like and subscribe and we'll see you real soon. Until then, bye for now.